Hello everyone and welcome back to Aztec Time. This is going to be the introductory video to a series on Ansible and I've put this series together in a way that I learned best to do Ansible where I started with the base, very basics first and then moved up to the more advanced stuff and I'm, I'm really kind of excited to do this video series because I use Ansible every day. However, like I said, not everybody has the same experience level with Ansible so I'm going to start off with the very basic concepts first and then move up to the more advanced stuff. So if you're a more advanced user, just please be patient with these video series. Use these videos that have stuff that you already know to practice and just be patient because more advanced topics are going to come along. So in this video I'm basically just going to give you an overview of what Ansible is, the scenario that I've came up for for this video series to teach you these Ansible best practices, and how this scenario will serve as a theme for the rest of the videos in my series here. So let's get started. <laughs> Did you see my cat run out the back door? For the most part the purpose of Ansible is to provision servers. And for this series of videos, I'm going to have three servers available to me. Server 1, Server 2, and Server 3. But the main idea is that we want to automatically provision these servers using Ansible's instead of manually spinning them up. And Ansible will allow us to automate as much of this process as possible, so it doesn't really matter how many servers there are. You can use Ansible to provision two to 500 different servers, and the number's really unlimited. Now typically in a production type environment, you'll have an Ansible server or an Ansible control host. Now typically this Ansible server will go out and connect to each of these servers, two, three, however many you have, to issue commands in order to provision that server for you automatically. Now the three servers don't necessarily have to have Ansible installed, but they can, they don't have to have it. Because you only have to have Ansible on the Ansible control host, and then Ansible will run from that host and reach out to each of the servers that you have. And Ansible will reach out to these servers via SSH to help provision them automatically for you. Now personally, the most confusing thing for me when I first started learning Ansible is that there is no one way to set up Ansible that's right for everybody. Everybody's work environment is different, and it all comes down to what works best for you, your workflow, and your work environment. Now of course with Ansible, there are some best practices that we're going to cover in this video series, and there are some efficient and non-efficient ways to run Ansible. Again, we'll cover all that in this video series. But Ansible in and of itself is a very strong program that is compatible with many different work environments, so there is no one-size-fits-all setup environment for it. In fact, you don't even necessarily have to have a dedicated Ansible server or Ansible control host. There's another way you can do it, and this alternative way of doing it is how we will be using Ansible for these next few videos. And for this video series, instead of an Ansible server or Ansible control host, I will be using my personal workstation as the Ansible server slash Ansible control host. And my workstation will contain the scripts or the playbooks that we will actually be using to run Ansible against these servers to provision them. So for those of y'all that are watching this video that want to replicate what I'm doing, this could be a laptop, this could be a Raspberry Pi, this can be some computer you pulled out of the closet just to go through this walkthrough. It doesn't really matter. You can even be using a cloud server provider. And to tile this into what you would be doing in a real world work environment, we're going to set this all up with a Git repository where our code will be stored up in Git so that anybody working on these servers can always pull the current Ansible playbooks and edit them as needed, push them back up to the repository, and again, we're going to be running Ansible from my workstation. My workstation is going to contain the code and the playbooks that we're going to be using. And then my workstation is going to check these code and playbooks into our Git repository so that if I was working with a team, the other team members can always pull down the most recent code and edit them and run the playbooks themselves to help provision these servers in our network. And this is also important because if something was to ever happen to this workstation, maybe it was to crash and you, got, and you had to go out and get a new workstation, you still had all these Ansible codes and playbooks up in the cloud in the Git repository. And so you can pull them down to your new computer and, and still run these playbooks against these servers. So having all this in a Git repository means that we're relatively protected against something like that. And it also allows you to work collaboratively with others. And you can benefit from the version control that's built in with Git. And that's all combined with the power of Ansible. And that's basically the outline that I'm going to follow for this video series. Now I am using servers that are on a VPS, but you can set up this environment on anything you want to. On a virtual machine, I got videos that I'll link down below that instruct you on how to set up different virtual machine environments. So after this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you how to set up HSH keys and how to copy them to our servers that we're going to be using. 
and I'll also show you how to create a Git repository if you're not familiar with that, and how to pull that down, make changes, commit those changes, and push it back up to your repository. That's important not only if you're using Ansible in a real world work scenario, but also if anything was to happen to your personal computer that you have your Ansible codes on, you have this backup in Git to go back to. Then I'll cover how to install Ansible, and from there we'll just get deeper and deeper into the world of Ansible and all the different aspects of it until you know enough to use Ansible to be productive in your particular environment. So thank you for sticking with me all the way to the end of this video, and I look forward to seeing y'all guys in the next video series. Thank you.